Hi, and thank you for joining us today. This is Miss Miller, and this is for your English 8 course, Gate or Honors. Welcome. Um, today is our official first video lecture for the class. It's a flipped course, and we'll find out more about that later. And so um, I wanted to do a brief recap of yesterday's amazing race. So it was so exciting to get to know all of you yesterday and sort of um, let you uh, navigate through the course in terms of all of the different challenges, routes, and detours. Um, it was really exciting to watch you guys um, do that. So I appreciate uh, your full participation yesterday that was fun okay so I wanted to talk to you about one of the things that you covered in your um, amazing race which was sort of addressing the agenda so the agenda for our class is pretty much set for the entire trimester um, and it's typically going to be in the same order um, each Monday you will do an assessment and most likely it'll be a summative assessment um, that counts for 70% of your grade so keep in mind the assessment for Monday is um, all of the work that we did the prior week. So really you have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to review for that assessment. Um, that summative assessment will most likely be a written assessment um, where you will be asked to write for the uh, duration of the period. So you want to make sure you get there on time. Um, if it's open notes, you want to make sure you have your notebook with every um, piece of information that you've worked on the prior week. Um, so you really want to be prepared because that's a big portion of your grade. Um, we probably won't be ready for an assessment um, in this class for a while because we're going to be sort of um, becoming familiar with the class and we're not really going to cover content for about a week or two um, specifically and we're still sort of working out the pearl material so that's really exciting um, the second day of the week, which is a Tuesday, you can expect to do a group collaboration. Every Tuesday, you're going to be working in groups, and it'll be the same groups for the trimester. Um, it'll be most likely groups of three, and it'll probably be uh, selected by me, myself, um, and it'll be used from data. And so we'll have to use some data from... Lexile data we could use, which is your reading levels. There's tons of data that I could use to help me design um, the groups for you. Or it could be self-selected. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but either way, you'll be working together for the, the, the uh, first trimester. And then every Wednesday, you can expect a Socratic seminar or a discussion. And so many of you have done those before in, a, in a, a class, and it'll be similar, but not necessarily the same. And we'll go into more details about that. Now, I don't expect you to do a Socratic seminar right away. I'm definitely going to build that skill for you. So um, maybe in the next few months, you'll be very um, proficient at it, and you'll know my expectations, and we'll be able to cover an excerpt or two from a text, and it'll be sort of rooted in... Um, an essential question or two. Usually it's going to be limited to one or two questions. And again, that Socratic seminar will be for the duration of the class period. Um, every Thursday, you can expect um, presentations from your classmates. And so maybe we won't start this Thursday, but you can expect to get up in front of your classmates. Some um, You will be working in groups, and um, it'll, it'll be most likely be the same groups that you worked with on Monday, but you will come up and do a PowerPoint presentation. We will typically just have two to three um, PowerPoint presentations um, each Thursday. So we'll get you on a schedule for your group. I'll let you know at the beginning of the week what you're going to be presenting, um, and I'll definitely be there to facilitate that and support you um, so that you have a successful presentation. And everyone in the group and the three individuals will need to be a part of that presentation in terms of speaking to the class. Meanwhile, while you're speaking to the class, everyone is going to be taking notes. And those notes are going to be a critical piece of your assessment. So you'll want to make sure that you, um, whether you're presenting or whether you're listening, that you're fully engaged. And then on Fridays, um, you can also expect to work with a partner. So initially at the beginning of the week, we worked in groups. We sort of narrow it down to working with a partner. And then eventually um, on Mondays, you'll work by yourself. Where you'll That's the only day that you'll actually do something on your own. But Fridays, it'll be like a game day, sort of like a review for the assessment. And everything that we do, though it may seem a little fun, um, is really for student engagement. And it really is going to be, it's going to be rigorous. So don't expect to do anything easy um, in this class. Um, so that is it for the week for the agenda.
The other thing that you did as you navigated through the class is you had to hop on one leg. Who does that, right? And carry dictionaries on this blue path. Well, that blue path is important for our class. Um, it's not mentioned in the syllabus, but I do want you to know that's the route that we would like you to take as you travel to pick up your notebooks each um, day for our class. So if you, most likely you'll have your notebooks with you because you're gonna be doing notes and taking notes at home from the video lectures. But um, if for whatever reason your notebook is in class, you'll want to, regardless of where you're sitting um, or as you enter the classroom, take that route to pick up your notebooks. Please don't travel to the front of the class and pass me because I have um, lots of cords on the ground. And for your safety, I would like for you to use that route. Okay, so wonderful. The next thing um, are the notebooks. So you had a chance to sort of peruse through a few of sample notebooks for our class. And I really want you to see like the expectations for the notebooks for our class. It's really important that um, everything is organized. And I do have a rubric that um, is in place for that. So uh, you'll want to get those notebooks by Friday. Okay, so those notebooks you'll want to pick up um, at the store. You want to get a large spiral notebook. Um, perhaps, I know in the, the syllabus has said 200 pages, 300, whatever you can get. The bigger, the better, because it's going to be for the duration of the school year. That's the same notebook we're going to use front, back, every line in that notebook um, for us and our work that we do together. And then the other thing that you had a chance to work with were the Common Core State Standards. And um, you got to look at speaking and listening, language, reading uh, literature, reading for information. Um, and all of those are essential to the class. And I really wanted you to look at that because sometimes when we come to class, we see our learning objective and we think the standards don't apply to us. But everything we do is... Um, centered around those common core standards and they are rigorous and it does require much of us and typically you'll see more than one common core standard so I do want you to reference it when you can in the class I'll make a note of which standards are being covered that day and each standard has in most cases reading for literature and information those have 10 categories that we have to get through throughout the year and you need to be proficient in it to get to the next level well not necessarily to get to the next level but to be successful and especially since this is in the gate and honors class, you want to be proficient in it, okay? Uh, and then the last thing um, that I wanted to address would be the um, filing cabinet um, in the back. And that was a struggle for us on the Amazing Race. Not so much um, fun leg of the race, but that uh, is a student cabinet that um, we're going to create for you guys. And so I have a teacher cabinet at the front of the classroom, but um, as we do things throughout the school year, we're going to build that student uh, cabinet for you. So when you come in, if you're absent, you can just access your material there. There's copies, but you guys are going to be responsible for sort of maintaining that. So if we have extra copies of anything in the class, you will want to create a file, put it in the back. If we do peer tutoring at the end of the day and you come in or if you're missing something, you don't even need me. You just go to the filing cabinet, grab your material and you go. All right, so you're all set. Um, so the next thing I want you guys to pay attention to is this description of a flipped course. There's a very um, brief uh, video that I found that I think is really uh, a really great presentation and it's very short it's like two minutes please pay close attention to it because our class is going to be flipped and that's a great thing and in the syllabus I did put in like one sentence what a flipped class is and so um, I think I su summarized that pretty well but this is a, a really detailed explanation and then I wanted to touch on one last thing, which is the pearl. So please, please, you have two weeks to go in and read the pearl by John Steinbeck. You can go on to the website, msmiller.proboards.com, M-S-M-I-L-L-E-R.proboards.com. You are expected to get that done. So you want to go in and do the post for weeks one through five to get credit. I'm going to start putting those in the grade book. So I will make an extension for those of you who were not not able to um, access it for whatever reason over the summer. Meanwhile, let's listen for this um, talk on a flipped class. Every day, 7.2 million students walk into classrooms throughout the United States. These classrooms generally look the same. 30 students sit in rows of desks taking notes in their notebooks while the teacher stands at a whiteboard teaching a lesson. Regardless of ability level, 
each student receives the exact same information at the exact same pace. As Ms. Jackson presents the same material, the students respond differently. Tommy gets it, while Allison is bored, and Maria is lost. At the end of the day, these same students head home. While at home, they sit at the kitchen table doing their homework and trying to remember what Ms. Jackson said. Students like Tommy make it most of the way through the homework, while others, like Allison, find it easy and fly through it. At the same time, students like Maria get frustrated and need some extra help. Ms. Jackson recognizes that students have different needs and would love to work individually with each student, but this requires time and resources that her school does not have. One solution to this problem is the flipped classroom. Here's what it looks like. While at home, students sit in their rooms watching videos of the lesson that Ms. Jackson assigned. Tommy is still able to work at his normal pace. Allison is no longer bored because now she can use this new technology to fast forward through the easy material. And Maria is no longer frustrated because she can review the material that she didn't understand by pausing and rewinding. When she really gets stuck, she can get help from her classmates. New technology platforms like Moodle and Edmodo make it easy for her to chat online with her classmates. Just as the homework is different, the classroom is different as well. Instead of standing in front of the room speaking, Ms. Jackson walks around the room. She checks in with Tommy as he works collaboratively with some students. She pushes Allison further with some more challenging work and she helps Maria with the pieces that she still doesn't quite get. In the traditional model, the teacher stands between the students and the knowledge. But with the flipped classroom model, the students have direct access to the knowledge, and the teacher serves as a coach, mentor, and guide, helping the students access this knowledge. The flipped classroom leverages technology in a way that lets both Ms. Jackson and the students make the most of their time and efforts.